This is the Evelo Atlas, and we're here with John O'Donnell, who's the director of product development. You designed this thing. I sure did. Man, it is fantastic. I've been covering Avello electric bikes for years and years, and it's always kind of neat to see a company do something special, something custom. You can see here that they've got a breakaway in the frame so we can get that Gates carbon belt drive. And this is the CDX, it's got the center track, but it's actually also their higher performance, stronger version. We have an NVO low. This has 380 degrees of shifting percentage. So it's, it's like an 11 to 42 tooth cassette. A little bit heavier than a cassette, but you don't have the derailleur hanging down. It's a little bit more it's just cleaner, right? It's nice. And you can shift it standstill. This is the mechanical version. We got a little infographic up there of a little guy climbing a hill or being on the flats. And we'll talk about shifting later. But what stood out to me about this bike is that it's just super sturdy. If we look at the suspension fork up here, it's got 110 millimeters of travel, okay? It's black, hard anodized aluminum alloy. It's an air fork, so it's highly adjustable. You can sag it to your body weight. We have progressive lockout. It's kind of a compression adjuster, as well as rebound at the bottom. And I think these are 34 millimeter stanchions, so they're fairly thick. Boost hub spacing, 110 millimeter hub spacing versus 100. And we have plus size tires. These are 27.5 by 2.8 so the higher air volume is going to add some comfort in addition to the suspension travel it's also going to give you some stability and some float lowers the attack angle it's really neat to see this i i feel like even though it's set up as almost like a speedy commuter here especially with that optional rear rack and everything we got fenders we got integrated lights with brake light activation even though it's set up as sort of a city model you could swap the tires out and you'd have like a cross-country electric bike and the motor on this thing is super powerful as well. Okay, so this is the Bafang M600. This produces up to 120 Newton meters of torque. Very, very high powered, but very smooth and actually pretty quiet as I've been cruising around. John, it sounds like you guys custom program this thing to be high power, but also to be sort of progressive when you when you pedal and activate it? We did, because we know that the average rider is looking for something that is, uh, it's a little more suitable for general recreational riding. Also, it's a little more sensitive when you're doing actual mountain biking. Yeah. So it doesn't feel like a scooter. It feels like an, a bicycle. It's still part of you but with more power. And speaking of that, there, there is like an optional throttle that you could potentially do with this bike, but it, it ships as like a class three, just sort of a speed pedal -like. That is correct. So top speed is 28 out of the box and it's basically it's throttle capable, it's throttle ready, uh, it's pre-wired. You can add the throttle, but keep in mind that's for off-road use only because right. at that point it's no longer legal to use it on the road. And in the future, there may be some more adjustments you can make in terms of speed uh, with the display. And we'll get to that later, but I want to call out there's actually a USB charging port at the base of the display so you could maintain your phone or add some additional lights and stuff. So I'm gonna hit some of the other just specs on this thing. It only comes in one frame size, and I believe one color. It's like the black that we see here. That is correct. Sort of a satin black, and that looks really nice. You see a lot of e-bikes do this because the wires and everything are black. Most of the hardware is black. So it kind of blends in, but they do have internal routing here. So you'll notice a, a, a jumble of cables up here, and that's because both brakes have motor inhibitors as well as that brake light activation. And then we have this external button pad, and that allows for the, the larger display in the middle. Okay, so looking at the bike, I guess it's interesting to see a longer stem and then a swept back handlebar up here because that gives you sort of a more comfortable, upright, relaxed body position. And I just mentioned you could convert it to off-road, so you could get like a flat bar if you wanted to. Correct. I'm seeing a lot of bikes from other companies where they're doing custom stuff and then you're kind of stuck with it. To me, this is a little bit more open source. And, you know, again, I'm, I'm excited to talk about the batteries and stuff in a minute, but coming down here, I think this is a 50 tooth belt ring. Is that so right? 55 tooth. 55 tooth. And then 26 tooth in the back. 26 tooth in the back, 170 millimeter crank arms. We got these Welgo aluminum platform pedals with the rubber tread. That's fine for the city. If I was going off-road, I would get some of the wider BMX pedals from Welgo. They even have some magnesium ones if you want to save some weight. And I should mention this bike, I think it's, 62, 66.2 pounds. With the battery. With right. the battery pack installed. Okay, and the battery is 8.5 pounds. I think the motor is like 8.6. Correct. So, you know, the weight's low and it's center, but it is a heavier bike, especially if you add some of those, you know, the extra battery pack and stuff. But that comes back to 
the bigger tires and these are plastic fenders, but look at how they're mounted to the lowers of that suspension fork. Okay, they're directly mounted. It's not like a plastic cuff. And I love how this is curved and smooth. It's not the kind that's like gonna poke you or get snagged. You've got a flexible you know, mud flap at the base here. And as we go towards the back of the bike, you can see this is a speed sensor, so it's measuring your rear wheel speed. We do have a magnet there on the spoke. Be careful if you ever have a read error, just make sure that's straight and that you know it's passing that sensor that could correct it, especially if you're someone who's riding off-road. It's also measuring pedal cadence and pedal torque. So it is a dynamic motor and it supports, I think up to 110 RPM pedal support. So as you're pedaling super fast in a low gear, maybe you're coming into a hill, the motor isn't gonna fade out on you. So this is a really cool motor from Bafang. It's exciting to see that, again, at like eight and a half pounds-ish, it's a little bit heavier, but to have such high torque. Do you remember the, the what was it, like 750 to 1200? Uh, oh, as far as the power spec, it's 600 watts nominal, and then peak power is 1200 watts. 1200, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a pretty powerful motor. Neat to see that, and again, just the custom frame and everything. Sliding dropout back here, so we don't see a slap guard or anything. You don't really need it because it's a it's a belt drive, so it's clean, it's quiet, and um, yeah, 31.6 millimeters. That's your seat post diameter, and it comes with 350 millimeters in height. That's an area I would consider maybe upgrading to a suspension seat post if you're like me and you, you really want that comfortable, you know, reduce your back strain, your, your arms and stuff. The suspension posts are really cool, but the saddle feels pretty good. This is Shadow Plus from Seller Royale. I got the quick release up there. Quick release up front as well. What Was the hub spacing back here like 135? 135. Very standard, and they kind of have to do that. I think NVOLO only makes their continuously variable transmissions in certain widths. And again, this is the trekking edition. So in addition to having like the high strength belt, you have the high strength CVT that can right. handle, and you, you kind of need that when you're dealing with this much power. Yeah, well, in our experience also, the CVTs uh, from NVOLO are pretty conservatively rated and we've had great great success using them with this platform very very low number of issues it's good on the, the previous bike of this which was was the evelo delta we used the same basic configuration of motor and hub with same amount of power up front and with this ebt we've been partnering with nvolo for 10 years and we've had great success with them that is fantastic there's so many little things i don't want to forget anything look at these grips these are custom made by Evelo, custom like cast, they're rubber, they're ergonomic, so they're gonna be a little bit more comfortable, and they're locking, I love that. And the reason they had to be custom is because we've got this, you know, half grip twist up here, and there aren't as many options that are gonna fit just perfectly. I, I like that, and you've even got the end cap, so if someone wants to add like a mirror. A mirror after the fact, they don't have to punch it out with a hammer or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, gotta love that. Let me talk about the brakes here too. I've mentioned them a couple times, but three finger levers, adjustable reach, we've got the motor inhibitors and brake light activation. Up front, we have a 180 millimeter rotor, which is great. You know, you've got a little bit more mechanical advantage and more surface area for cooling. This is dual piston calipers, pretty standard. Uh, weight tends to shift forward when you stop. So having a bigger rotor up front makes sense. In the rear, we have 160 millimeter rotor which is still gonna do a pretty good job. I've noticed that the brakes, they feel good. I mean, do you have anything to add? For me, with brakes, it's like they're hydraulic. That's the big win. Yeah, well, they're hydraulic and also it's a mineral oil based system versus a DOT5, so maintenance is a little more simplified as a result. Okay, and then we talked a little bit about all the electronics coming into this, and it sounds like this thing is using CAN bus, so the signals are a little bit faster and you get better precision on like the, the battery readout and stuff. Yeah, that's correct. This the standard up until now has been UART, which is most e-bikes that are out on the market now. Uh, this uses more sophisticated battery. It's a 21700 cell battery that communicates via CAN bus between the controller and the motor, the battery, the display panel. Very uh, cool. So, yeah, it's just a more reliable system overall. It's great, and that helps you guys too. So you have a pretty good warranty. I think there's even like a grace period or like a, can you recite that for me? There, absolutely, so we have a 21 day free return policy, yeah. uh, which even includes shipping back. If you're not happy with the bike, you can send it back to Contiguous us. US, free shipping on this. And, uh, and then as far as the warranty is concerned, it's a comprehensive four year warranty on the bike, four years or 20,000 miles. It covers everything on the bike, with the exception of the battery, which is two years and then for the subsequent two years since the, since it is a consumable item, there's a prorated period from year two to year four. Cool, cool. And this is it's $46.99, right? That's MSRP That's on correct. the Atlas. $46.99. Oh, $46.99, yeah, very cool. Um, 
I want to call out that they're actually including, in addition to having bottle cage bosses, they actually give you that plastic um, holster and a, a nice little bottle. So that's a fun little extra. Let's talk a little bit about the lights here. So in the rear, we have Pixio by Spinninga. It's like a single LED. But in the front, we have this Cree, like, what is it, 400? 400 lumens, lumens on the wow. front and then side lights for side visibility as well. I love that, right? He, he hit the nail on the head, especially when you have a black bike with minimalist accents, which I kind of appreciate. Sometimes you get the crazy branding everywhere. This is tasteful. Um, I'm gonna activate that headlight by holding the plus button. And yeah, you can see those slots on the side. So you're gonna be visible from more angles. You're gonna have a really bright light that's aimable. It is down on the arch of the suspension fork, which means it's unsprung. So it could bounce up and down a little bit more, but it's not hanging out on the fender or whatever. And considering that it's a little busy up here, I think that makes sense. Feels like it even has, is this an aluminum housing? It's an aluminum housing. Yeah, so pretty durable. They got the Juliet connectors everywhere. So if there is an issue, you can just kind of swap things out easily. John, before we get into the battery and stuff, did I miss anything? You want to call out any other aspects of the frame or the no, components? I think, no, I think you did a great job covering it. But uh, one thing I did want to mention about the frame is we added this gusset here just to lower the standover height a little bit. It's yeah. a one size fits most frame, 17 and a half inch. But this gives a little bit of extra clearance for a little bit smaller rider to still be able to fit on this bike. Yeah, that's great. By the way, I'm 5'9", I weigh 135 pounds. The bike feels great. We actually raised the saddle a bit, so I'm getting that full leg extension. And, you know, I'm I'm an active rider, so this is wonderful. But there's, there's so much power here. We were climbing a minute ago up kind of like a gravelly, rocky area. And the tires were performing really well. They weren't slipping out. And I wasn't having to stand up. I wasn't having to, like, strain my knee or anything so I really appreciate that let's go ahead and actually before we get to the battery this is the charging port on the side of the frame right there so you can charge the pack on or off the frame and the battery charger weighs about a pound and a half and it's a three amp so it's a little bit faster than your average charger which is nice especially considering it's a 720 watt hour primary battery pack and if you get the secondary battery which is the similar capacity they charge with just one port you don't have to charge it in two different places and they balance within five percent of each other so that is correct very beautiful how much is it to get the the rack and the, the external battery here so eight hundred dollars and it includes the rack the control module and the battery mm -hmm. and then also includes the tail light and an extension kit and the tail light also has brake light activation so like you know at first it was like oh you're kind of the first lights getting blocked by the rack but they give you an i would argue an even better one with like two leds and a big reflective surface it's positioned really well like paneer hangers you got a platform on top apparently it's rated at 25 kilograms even beyond this pack which is you know 7.4 pounds so that's great you know whether it's a child seat or whatever I must say adding this changes the handling a little bit uh, on the bike because it's longer, a little bit of a crack the whip feel, but you know, it's working pretty well. And they, they give you that direct plug right here. Everything on the bike is what IP65 Correct. rated against water and dust. So, so, so many good details that we've been going through. You know, I get, I'm getting ahead of myself here. The main battery, it's in that down tube. You just insert the key like this and twist. And you can see it, it just steps out to that first position. It's a little crowded down here with the fenders, but there's enough space. Just pull on it a little bit like this. Take it the rest of the way out. We do have a little LED charge level indicator on top. And it really is nice to be able to charge this off of the bike. Whether you're putting this on a car rack and trying to reduce the weight, or you gotta leave this in a hot garage, you know, the heat, extreme temperatures can kind of damage the lithium ion cells over time. You're not gonna get as many full charge cycles. So I think the exact spec here, 48 volt, uh, 15 amp hours roughly. I'm pretty impressed with this. Yeah, yeah. well the, the 21700 cells, they do make a bit of a difference in terms of lightening the pack up and providing a little more energy density. Of course, the pack itself, it's an aluminum housing, so it's still not the lightest pack out there, but it's extremely durable, and it's just the newest technology. Yeah, for 720 watt hours, you know, not bad. Yeah. Here's, try to mount this again, carefully line it up, put it in, and then I think, you know, there's that first step. If I take the key out, then you can just push on this, and you hear it click, and you're ready to go. Okay, let's turn this bad boy on. Press the power button. 
comes to life. They even give you a little Evelo logo. You guys have been around for a long time too, we, right? We have over 10 years now. Over 10, was it 2012, 2011, yeah. something like that? Yeah, we, I, I started back then too. And you know, it's a lot of good memories. The same time. You were one of our first customers. I was, I, that's right. It was like the early days. So looking at this display, I just love that they give you battery percentage. And as John was saying with, with the CAN bus, this is not only is it like a precise readout, but it's a more accurate readout as well. And we've got the current time. We got a little dashboard here. Almost reminds me of an automobile with like a speedometer in the middle, assist levels. We can turn it off all the way and just pedal and we'll have the lights and we'll have that USB port available. But otherwise there are five levels of assist. And then down here we have trip distance and time. And if we press the M button, it sort of cycles through. So you got the odometer, a range. So it does, it has like dynamic range estimates too. It does. And obviously the accuracy of that will kind of depend on your terrain. The more mixed it is, accuracy will Can down. bus, come on, John. <laughs> no, but I, yeah, he's giving you the disclaimer, but the fact that they're even attempting to give you a range estimate is pretty cool. Keep in mind, we have two batteries on right now. So um, your mileage may vary. We keep cycling through, there's trip distance. Okay, I already mentioned if you hold the plus button, that's how we get the lights to activate. I'm surprised that the lights just don't come on automatically. Like when you turn on, you have to turn them on. Was that the product manager must have made a decision? <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of it came down to availability on the display panel, having a light sensor that would work. So. Oh, so this actually, so you're saying if it was night, the lights would automatically come on. Here, let's, and so I'm gonna turn the lights off manually. And then if you cover it up, does it, does the light sensor work? Maybe it would work out, <laughs> so we're not. Yeah. So, so that's cool. There's actually a light sensor built into this. Um, I was trying to figure out walk mode and it, it didn't activate earlier. This is a heavier bike. Uh, maybe there's a setting in there. As, as I mentioned, supply chain and, and updates on these bikes are always happening. It was awesome to get the support and actually checking out your website and the, the details there are really good and you have some videos and stuff too. So coming back to the display, one of my favorite parts is these settings and I think if we double tap M yes now here we are so you can change the language the units the brightness auto off there are, there are a lot of settings this looks slightly different than before maybe because the lights are are off and before they were on correct so the display actually this is so cool you guys check this out so we exit if I turn the lights on the display dims too I love that okay that's that's really cool but you can still adjust the brightness so if you're riding with daytime running lights brighten the display up Anything I'm, I'm missing about the display here? No, the only thing I did want to mention on this particular bike, it's a little more locked down than some of our other models so mm -hmm. that if the end user cannot change the speed, that's why we ship this as a class three bike Yeah, uh, that does not include a throttle. Uh, the Bafang M600, the whole platform is generally locked down so that we at the manufacturing level can adjust things, but it's not something that the user can go in and tinker with. Got it. It was interesting to hear the, the throttle option that being able to do that. I know some people yeah, we, we have a ton of requests for throttles, so we didn't want to completely exclude those people. So we did want to pre-wire the bike so that if someone does want to add a throttle, it's not a major operation. They're not fishing wires through the frame or anything like that. Can it, does it look the same as what we've got over here? So so just if a... it were installed, it would install and look just like this on the bike. Okay, that's great. Which model is this again, John? So haven't... this is the Evelo Omega. This is the Omega. Okay, cool. And then Atlas, it's like Greek gods or something. What's the theme? Yeah, well, I, I guess it is actually. And or letters? <laughs> actually, it's funny you mention that because their Greek names actually did go back to the beginning of the company and the first models. And we've the Aries. Kind of, yeah. yeah, exactly. And we've kind of gotten away from that with the Aurora, the, the Aries. Uh, and we've opened up the galaxy. We've opened things up a bit in terms of, na of names, but these Celestial are Celestial names, that's, that's very cool. Okay guys, I think it's a, it's a good opportunity to take a ride. Okay, getting ready to do a little ride test here. I like to test an assist level five so you can hear the motor at its loudest and just you know see how this performs. It's pretty zippy and it's nice. I mean, having that much power, the bike has a pretty high weight rating up to 350 pounds which is above average. Usually it's 250 or 300. So 350, that's, that's quite good. And again, the motor can, can handle that. Oh boy. Beautiful. I mean, you can hear it, but it's, it's not too loud. And then being able to shift at standstill, 
I'm a big fan of that. You know, you get to a stop sign and you're on a hill and you realize, oh, I need to get down to that easy gear and you can just kind of twist that and start with that higher cadence all without worrying about the motor dropping out on you. See, I'm fairly upright, relaxed. Brakes are doing a great job. I was a little surprised they didn't put 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. I asked John about that and he said, maybe, maybe it's kind of a weight saving sort of thing. I think you can upgrade to 180 millimeter yourself. Just use a little bit more material. I like to do a kind of a noise test with the fenders and the rear rack and everything. So we've got some grass here. Pretty good, feeling pretty solid. Like, you know, whenever you've got a rear rack with some weight on it, there's a little bit of some, you can have some flex and stuff, but I'm impressed with the higher weight capacity in addition to, you know, the eight pound battery. There's a bunch of arms coming down. John, you know, can you tell me a little bit more about this? It sounds like you custom engineered this thing. Uh, we did, we made it so that there are no additional separate struts. It's just one rack, one piece. Mm -hmm. that bolts onto the bike so it's very solid it doesn't come loose and we took a couple of extra steps to make sure that it was extra solid most racks will use either an m4 or m5 size fastener we've actually upgraded it to an m6 so it's basically the largest size bolt you can use while still not having giant oversized tubing nice and then we also spec the reusable thread locker on the bolts oh, so wow. you can take the rack on and off at least three times with no degradation and strength for the thread for the thread locker you want to make sure to get it nice and tight when you install the bolts on there. Mm -hmm. But if you keep it tight, use the factory installed thread locker that's on the bolts. When you install the rack kit, it should stay nice and solid for you. So it's not quite a fair assessment of the bike given that I'm not sure everyone would get that rear battery pack. I should mention also that it's it would use a separate key. So even though you can charge the batteries like simultaneously with that single charger, um, to remove the rear battery, you have a separate key, which means you got to keep track of more stuff. Not the end of the world, but something worth considering. Another beautiful day. I've had a lot of fun sharing the Evelo Atlas with you. $46.99 for this bike. You know, I think they've done a really good job, very thoughtfully done, and it's just so fun to speak with the product manager and the designer, get all those details. Uh, back at electricbikereview.com, I have a comparison tool. So you can look at most of the other Evelo products. I've reviewed a lot of them over time. Some of the reviews are a bit out of date, but you can comment and get feedback from other actual owners. There's a forum as well. So you can talk to people about accessories and different things that work well. Evelo sells a lot of their own accessory packages and stuff and kind of guaranteed to fit. And that can be really convenient. I love you guys. I hope you had fun with this. Ride safe out there and we'll see you next time.